I remember seeing the press releases for this thing and thinking, whoa, that seems so cool. But also who in their right mind would ever buy it? I guess now we've got the answer because an LTT viewer from Milwaukee put the Galaxy GTX 460 WHDI in the mail for us. And after 10 years, I finally get to be hands on with, to my knowledge, the only wireless GPU that has ever existed. What makes it a wireless GPU? I'm so glad you asked. On the back of the GPU, aside from your DVI and display port, you will find five antennas, which supposedly allow this graphics card to send an uncompressed, low latency 1080p image to supported devices. What supported devices? I don't know. How does it work? I guess we're gonna find out. And who sponsored this video? Well, our sponsor. Signal RGB. With Signal RGB, you can control and sync your favorite RGB devices all from one app. Best of all, it's free. So download Signal RGB at the link in the video description. Because of the age of this product, it was released before Linus Media Group was actually founded as a company. We're gonna be doing the video in a bit of an older classic LTT style, starting with an overview of the box. What's included? Oh good, driver installation disc. Whoa, it includes the WHDI receiver. So theoretically, we could actually use this on any modern display. Antennas, power cable, and this is it, right? This is the whole sales pitch. Free your HD content from your PC and display it on your HD TV up to 100 feet away through walls with uncompressed less than one millisecond quality. Do you call bull on this, Jake? He's making a face. <laughs> you got some alcohol handy? What, what did they change their mind about here? Using HDMI, something, and WHDI, you can now stream your movies, music, and pictures to the big screen in glorious 1080p HD with support for HD audio. Have you ever wanted to play the latest DirectX games on your big screen? Okay, so it has one sales pitch reiterated three times. Use this thing with a TV that is far away, completely wirelessly. What and what? HDMI 11.4a. Oh, HDMI 1.4a. So it was probably 1.4b or something. And they, interesting. There were a number of things that raised questions about this product at the time of its release. First of all, Galaxy, which has since been renamed Galax, is a sub-brand of Palette, who also owns a number of other brands. Gainward, Daytona, uh, Vivku, Yuan, and Expert Vision. None of which have ever really had a strong North American presence other than maybe Gainward, but Gainward was a long time in the rearview mirror by the time <clears throat> Galaxy was trying to make inroads. Second of all was the price. It was released in January of 2011 and was sold for a price of $499, which for a 60 class Nvidia card might not raise a lot of eyebrows today, but to put it in context at the time was a whopping $315 more than the version that didn't have wireless display. So it was kind of in a no man's land where it was priced like a premium top tier gaming GPU, but then positioned as a replacement for a media center GPU, which would have cost you half as much as even a 460, which was considered overkill for that at the time. This is an accessory package, the likes of which I have rarely, if ever seen for a GPU. What are we looking at here? First, you've got one of the fancy danciest HDMI cables that I think I've ever seen included with anything. We've got a USB-A to USB mini B. Wow, these are in pack. Wait, what the hell am I looking at? A female USB-A to mini B and a male USB-A to mini B. Bizarre. DVI to VGA adapter, that's pretty standard fare. I can't believe the condition this thing is in. It's open box, but as far as I can tell, this stuff has never been touched. Here's a power adapter for the receiver dock. Oh yeah, I know Ghost Bell power. Very reputable. Are you joking? Oh yeah. yeah very famous, famous brand. Uh, user manual. 
What do they have to say for themselves? Oh my God, yeah, that's uh, definitely dating itself a little bit. Fun fact, by the way, even though this GPU family, the 400 series is no longer getting active driver support, we were able to find a driver that supports Windows 10 and is only from about four years ago. So we should be able to play most modern games on it, assuming there's enough performance. Whoa. This thing has like weights in it to keep it from moving. I guess it's a weighted base station for, ah, here we go. You know what? I'm gonna leave the peels on. I'm gonna leave the peels on out of respect for the uh, viewer who lent us this. I don't, maybe they like their peels. They're an Andy type character. So this is the WHDI receiver hub, which is not to be confused with YDI, which eventually became a modern standard that we can still make use of today and is built into many TVs. It was built into some media devices, including TVs, but as far as we can tell, it never really evolved and amounted to anything. The web site is still up, but as of filming this video, it has a picture of a PlayStation 3 on the homepage, meaning that it doesn't look like there's much in the way of active development. We also have seen this type of technology continue to get support. So for example, we did a video recently on a wireless HDMI solution that can simply be added to any product rather than being baked in, which is in retrospect, the direction the industry was obviously going to go rather than forcing consumers to buy a completely new wireless video card every time they wanted to upgrade at a significant premium. There's our receiver dongle, which needs to plug into the wall and I don't know what this USB port is for, but presumably something. Uh, are you getting all this, Brandon? Maybe just get a shot of it like that. Or... <laughs> User's manual, mini HDMI, okay. NVIDIA control panel, SLI, oh my God. Yeah, SLI was supported on 60 class cards. It wouldn't surprise me to see an SLI connector on this thing. I can't even imagine. I wonder if the mismatched BIOS would be a problem if you tried to SLI it with a non-wireless one. Holy crap. This thing is glorious. Wait, is this rusting or is this just, no, no, it can't be rust. No, 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 it's residue. It's residue. If you want to talk to Galaxy, which doesn't exist anymore, then you can call that number. Hold on, this has got to, yeah, this has got to be anodized aluminum. There's no way. Yeah, yeah, it comes off, it comes off, Jake. It's not a rusty boy. <laughs> it feels pretty cheap for a $500 GPU. Oh my goodness. Okay, what are we looking at here? Pretty basic board layout. Oh, in terms of specs, so what was a 460? One gig of VRAM, a mere 336 shaders. It used the same Fermi architecture as the much maligned GTX 480, although the 460 was actually a pretty sensible card. It didn't have the same power consumption problems. It's got support for DisplayPort. I believe this is 1.1, I wanna say. HDMI 1.4a, although you'll notice that the HDMI port is conspicuously absent, and of course, DVI. That's because the only HDMI-ish port on this thing is these five antennas. Why does it need five antennas, you might ask? Ah, because 60 gigahertz wireless didn't exist yet. These days, 1080p 60 wirelessly, no problem. I mean, we've got wireless VR headsets that are doing far higher than that with incredibly low latency and indistinguishable visual quality. But these are all five gigahertz. So in order to reach the three gigabit per second of advertised throughput, it needed five five gigahertz streams at 40 megahertz each. At least that's our understanding of it. As you guys can probably imagine, there's not a whole lot of people at Galaxy that we can talk to about this technology. <laughs> Look at this thing. Oh man, I freaking love it. An advantage of five gigahertz is that unlike the 60 gigahertz that we use for wireless HDMI today, theoretically, at least if their advertising is anything to go by, we should be able to punch through walls with it. And that's thanks at least partially to the quality of service features that are included with the product that allow it to analyze the streams of data, figure out which elements are most important and ensure that those ones get through. How it's doing this with one millisecond latency, I have absolutely no idea and honestly, I kind of just plain don't believe it, but that's what this is for. We're gonna install it. We actually don't know if it works yet. Oh my gosh, this is 
flipping wild. Now, theoretically, we shouldn't really need to configure anything about the wireless stream. It should just work. And it features encryption. So again, theoretically, no one should be able to snoop on your video stream. Cause I don't know what kind of videos you're watching in your, in your full HD TV, but maybe you don't want people knowing about it. That's all I'm saying. It's also HDCP 2.0 compliant, so you could play back HDCP. Shut up. It's HDCP compliant too? I mean, that's pretty cool because you gotta remember too that this is a product of its time, right? At the time, optical HDMI cables were not really a thing. So transmitting HDMI over long distances, particularly to a projector or something like that was very difficult. It's the sort of thing I never would have spent money on. Like even if I had it at the time, I don't think. Cause you know you're buying into a dead upgrade path. But it's definitely cool. Imagine having this hanging off the back of your computer. Probably wouldn't use that HDMI cable. Yeah, I'm using the HDMI cable. Look at how crushed it is. No, I want it. This is a wireless HDMI cable. Okay, it's quality. It's gonna work. You just wait. Man, this is one of those like, I feel like a, I feel like a young tech enthusiast again, you know? It takes me back to 10 years ago when this stuff came out and I was like, whoa, that's so cool, but I'll never get a chance to look at it or touch it. So I'm, I'm making up for those lost opportunities now. Is this powered on or what? It looks like an IR receiver. Does this thing have a remote? Again, this wasn't the only product to use this technology. It is possible that it had some kind of intercompatibility with other devices. For example, at Best Buy at the time, you could get a WHDI hub for about 300 bucks. So actually not that much less than the cost of, you know, buying this fully integrated device that comes with everything you need. Is there a power light on there? There, no, there isn't a power light. There's a network light and a video light. Is okay, this a... Yeah, let's just, let's just turn it on and see what happens, huh? Okay, what are the odds this just works painlessly? And that's why this technology was so successful in the long run. Whoa, shut up. No way. Shut up. No way. No way. The monitor's getting signal right now. Shut up. I have two lights on the back of the GPU. I have two lights on this thing. Oh my God. Oh my God. Did this just oh my God. work? <laughs> no way. <gasps> what the fuck? That is freaking crazy. Never been turned on before. <laughs> Immediately works. Oh. No, 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 that's probably just the drivers grabbing it. We set up this Windows install with a 480 because it was something that we already had on hand and it would use the same family of drivers. So it's probably just sort of picking that up. Oh, no, okay. Device manager, come on, buddy. You know what? Come feel this. Jake, 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 come here. Oh my God, look at it, it's jittering. Okay, but hold on, hold on, the latency. Whoa. Would you know it's wireless? Oh my God. No, no, don't do that, don't do that. Just move the mouse, move the mouse. It's not bad. Would you know it's wireless? No, I would just think it's like, I would just think the cable is shoddy. Which may be true. I mean, it was folded for 10 years <laughs> in half. <laughs> oh, we're totally gonna have to game on this, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, we got a game on this. We might have to play some older games, you know? I put CSGO on here. Yeah, but we might need oh. CS Source. <laughs> Never mind CSGO, Jake. Why? What? CSGO could run 2010. Didn't it come out in like 2012? Hey! Okay. Wait, the frequency. Uh, 5700 megahertz. Whoa, there's like an overlay and stuff. Oh, interesting. Wait, could you pass USB over this too? Or I can't believe this just immediately worked out of the box. That is wild. Okay, you're seeing the real deal here, guys. This is the only way, literally the only way that we could capture what's going on here. That BenQ monitor is a super unique item. It has almost every input under the sun, and most importantly, it has an output. It has HDMI pass-through, kind of like some capture cards. Now, normally, we could use HDMI pass-through on a capture card to capture what we're doing while also outputting it. But because we want to show you guys any degradation of quality or jitteriness that's coming from the wireless connection, we actually need to capture what comes through the monitor rather than output what comes through a capture card. So our capture PC here is coming woo, out of the monitor. Yeah, that's it. It's coming out of the monitor. Nothing else has gone right today, but everything here is just immediately working. I'm so happy. Is it 60 or 30? 
I mean, I'll record it 60. 60. Like... Yeah, it's, it's 1080 60. Oh god, the interlacing is bad. Uh, it's not interlacing. I think it's just like blocking and compression artifacts. It's interlacing on my side. On your side? Yeah. Interesting. I wonder if they're faking the 1080p-ness yeah. of it. Because looking at this, guys, um, whatever they're saying about there not being any compression is clearly a lie. Watch how far this is across the screen versus how far this is across the screen. Oh yeah, it's like jello. Do you see the window deforming as I move it back and forth? I have seen an effect like this on cheap tablet screens. Um, I've seen an effect like this on LCDs in very cold weather. So where the, where the switching speed of the pixels is affected by the actual almost freezingness, like the, the gel-like state of the liquid crystals. Um, I've never seen it on a wired connection, but then again, I still haven't because this is clearly wireless. We haven't seen it yet, but apparently a feature of this quality of service feature that it has is that some aspects of the image can be lost altogether or not update altogether if they're deemed to be less important. Apparently nothing we were doing was considered important in that case. Hey, there it is. It is 1080i, you're right. There must be deinterlacing on the receiving box. Yeah, so they're actually completely faking the 1080p aspect of it. Now hold on just a gosh darn minute here. Inglorious 1080p. I guess they don't technically say that the source is 1080p. So as long as your device supports upscaling 1080i to 1080p, then you will be experiencing it in maybe not glorious 1080p, but 1080p nonetheless. Enough fooling around on the desktop though. Let's play a Vidya game. How pissed off would you have been if you were advertised glorious 1080p and you got this jittery mess for $500? But as angry as I am, the flip side is that there was absolutely nothing else even close to this. And once I'm in content, um, not gonna lie guys, it's not nearly as noticeable. Okay, this is totally playable, especially in a game that has like, uh, you know, amb ambiance, you know, like got film grain or, or fog effects or anything like that. Okay, hold on, I wanna look at it head on here. There's a little bit of jitter. You can see it. See how he's kind of bouncing up and down a little bit? Everyone just calls me coach. But when you're playing, like really playing in the zone, it's not the kind of thing that you'd be likely to notice. With that said, one of the use cases that they advertise for it is multimedia, like watching HD movies. In a movie, this would drive me absolutely bonkers. Not cool, not cool, Galaxy. I think you should try CSGO. Yeah, let's try, okay, yeah, let's try something a little more demanding. I think we figured out the weird USB cables. It seems like you can also wirelessly transmit USB. All you've gotta do is inject USB 2, there we go, into the back of the GPU. Okay. Then you get a female USB hanging off the back of this guy. Yeah. And theoretically, maybe it'll just work, I don't know. Probably not, okay. I have no idea where we would find drivers for something like that at this point. Honestly, it's bad enough close up like this that I really don't think we even need to see it. Not gonna lie, in a game like this where every little bit counts, this is not, this is not cutting it. Not cutting it even a little. The really good latency experience we were having before, I think was due to the uh, relatively low complexity of the image. Oh, it looks awful now. Yeah, I don't even think we need to, I don't think there's anything Let else. Try. Yeah, here, give it a shot. What about like a, you should watch a video. Just see how a video is out of this too. It's gonna look bad. But this feels bad, man. Oh, <laughs> we're in a real match, so you'll have to oh. wait. Maybe you're just bad, man. No, it feels bad. Oh, I helped. God. See what I mean? Here, lean back. You're, you're blocking my signal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jake. <laughs> oh, my God. Whoa, does it affect it that much? No. No, no. no. That it's might have just bad. been a random spike. You're not sniping. Somebody else is off and down here. Oh, God, no. Nope. nope, not even a little. Ah! Oh, you were close! You almost got him! Oh, the 
the latency no. is brutal. It's so bad. It's like playing on a wireless Xbox controller. Oh no. I can't believe console people deal with this sort of stuff. I know. <laughs> I mean, they don't deal with this anymore. Not by a long shot. Let's try some video. Oh my God, look at the move. Oh God. Oh yeah. The fact that they advertised this as uncompressed, if anyone had ever actually bought it, there would have been lawsuits. <laughs> See, this looks fine. Yeah. You can't tell a camera that much, actually. Seems well, we got screen caps, so hopefully. It wasn't so bad the second time. The first time I looked at it, when all the crabs were moving, so I just, like, were walking. Oh, yeah, that's awful. Oh, look at the legs. That's that quality of service right there. Ugh. Yeah, who needs legs anyway, right? Oh, gross! Did you see when it crossed over? Oh! oh. There's just stuff just missing sometimes, though. So, cool tech. Can see why it didn't take off. But what did take off is this message from our sponsor. Squarespace, do you think making a website is hard? Well, it doesn't have to be. Use Squarespace and you'll get a website up and running in a matter of hours, maybe even faster than that. They have award-winning templates that will help you make your website stand out instead of it looking like it's from the 90s. And if you're interested in how your website is doing, they have built-in tools to help you find out what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. Both our Linus Media Group and LTX Expo websites were built quickly using Squarespace. And if you ever get stuck making a website, they have a 24-7 support team ready to help you out. So head to squarespace.com LTT and you can get 10% off today. If you guys enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy the look we took at a bizarre quad GPU card from ATI that was actually used for flight simulation. That ended up being a really cool dive into the history of custom graphics solutions for like really, really high tier clients.